What is up, Restaurant World? Thank you so much for being here today for another episode of the Tip Share. We're so excited to be here with you. Uh, this podcast, for those of you who don't know, dives deep into the labyrinth of all things restaurant. And today, we're looking at a guide on restaurant taxes for managers and owners. Let's jump right in. We're going to begin with talking about the importance of understanding restaurant taxes as a business owner. So the restaurant industry has specific conditions that complicate its taxation, such as tipped employees and a bevy of state and local laws that regulate sales and payroll taxes. And as a restaurant owner, it's critical that you and not just your accountant understand the taxes on restaurants. Now, when it comes to IRS tax regulations for restaurant businesses in the United States, businesses are taxed differently depending on their legal structure. And we'll explore a little bit what that means for sole proprietors, C-Corps, and more in this next section. This is going to seem like a lot of information here, but I want you guys to pay attention because it's important to identify which type of these you are as well as which combination of tax returns you might be using here. So we have individuals and pass-through entities use some combination of 941s, 940s, W2s, Schedule C's, Schedule SE's, and 1040s. Now, partnerships are a little bit different. So partnerships use 944s, 940s, 1065s, Schedule E's, Schedule SE's, and 1040s. The last one of these is corporations, and they engage with 941s, 940s, Schedule E's, Schedule SE's, and 1120s. Now, corporate taxation by entity type. We're going to dive into these types a little bit here and just kind of go over a brief overview of what they are in a nutshell. So we're going to start with sole proprietorships. And a sole proprietorship passes on all tax liability to the individual. No corporate tax rate is paid. Instead, the owner pays personal income tax on all restaurant profits. That is sole proprietorships uh, in a nutshell. We're going to dive into LLCs and partnerships next. An LLC or a limited liability corporation can be single member or multi-member meaning it has one owner or in other cases, it may have multiple owners. But in either case, all taxes are passed through to the owners who are assessed taxes at an individual rate. Partnerships work the same way as LLCs or limited liability corporations. Now, when it comes to corporations, restaurants organized as corporations file a corporate tax return and then separately, all shareholders must pay tax on the dividends that are received, which means that corporate profits are taxed doubly, first at the corporate level, and then they get taxed again when the profits are distributed. Now let's jump to understanding restaurant taxes. So sales tax. Restaurants are responsible for collecting sales tax on all transactions, not few transactions, but all transactions. And this requirement encompasses not just food and beverage sales, but also things like catering, things like merchandise and space rental income. And your city and state typically set their own sales tax rates, though some jurisdictions are notable for not having any sales tax whatsoever. So it just kind of depends on where you're at. But when it comes to payroll taxes, uh, payroll taxes are paid to the government to cover Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment tax. And part of payroll tax is the responsibility of the employee, and it's deducted by you on their behalf from their paychecks. So know that going in. When it comes to property tax, in the event that you own the restaurant's building and the land, you're responsible for paying property tax. Now, the last one is income tax. And income tax for restaurants is the same for any other type of business. Employees are responsible for paying their share of income tax on their W-2 forms that they receive. So we're going to jump right into restaurant taxes on tips. And tips are taxable income and must be reported that way. So there is space on W-2 forms for this purpose. And tips get no special tax treatment whatsoever. The tax rate is the same as regular income and payroll taxes are assessed in the same manner. So employers are responsible for correctly withholding payroll taxes from employee wages and paying the appropriate employer share of payroll taxes. Now we're going to dive into the strategies for restaurant tax planning. So it is well worth the investment to work with a tax professional who can help you reduce your audit risk and maximize your deductions. This is the first strategy. This is just kind of the first tip. It is extremely important to work with somebody who really knows what they're doing. That way they can just make sure that um, you're dotting your I's and just taking care of what you need to take care of while avoiding any sort of risk whatsoever. Also kind of like provides a little bit less stress on yourself as you get a trust in somebody else that really knows what they're doing. So 
That's the first strategy. The second strategy is retaining all records of sales transactions, purchases, and payroll. This information will be crucial in the event you need to show proof of your accounting figures to the IRS or local tax authorities. Anytime there's ever any question, this is super important because you want to be able to back yourself up. So make sure that you're retaining all your records, you're keeping everything that's documented in a safe place so you can refer to it later if necessary. And finally, Remember that you're responsible for paying estimated taxes at regular intervals throughout the year, not just April. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's tip share episode. That is all we have for you this week. Uh, we thank you so much for tuning in wherever you guys are from. And we just encourage you guys to come back, check us out, check out some of our other episodes. We've got a lot of content for you on how to navigate the restaurant industry. So again, we hope you have a great week. Thank you very much.